Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome back to the iCraft server after an unbelievable break. Uh, first off, want to apologize. Um, yeah, so I had a lot of issues. Um, had some medical stuff going on. Got everything cleared up, but it really put me out of commission. Actually, for the better part of like three weeks. Um, I did have some back episodes, and so that's... Yeah, that's that's what we uh, that's what ended up showing. So what you're looking at now, and let me zoom out. Um, what you're looking at now is the new Iron Titan on the server. Um, so I wasn't feeling really well enough to record uh, with the the vocal work. Um, a lot of my medical kind of focused around um, having difficulty breathing, which I have uh, really bad asthma and. Um, so anyway, I uh, wasn't able to talk a whole lot or do a whole lot. There we are right there. Uh, but I was able to log on. Um, our, our good buddy XB Crafted, he started uh, the layout for this. Um, built the pillar here. Uh, well, he had the initial pillar in the middle. And uh, basically, he went through and built... I, I can English. <laughs> uh, he went through and built the storage area for this and the xb was actually in the middle of a move and then uh he had a little bit of time he wasn't feeling well as either uh so what we did was i decided to take some of the load off of xb and actually build the titan now uh, this is the 32 village version um and of course the iron titan was created by tango tech and uh so what we did is is i took his pillar and i built it out of glass and we had a little kill, a running chamber down here, and then we built the actual Titan. Um, what we did is we took apart the villager iron farm that was down here already. Uh, I moved the villagers up to the top of this with a water elevator, and then I bred them up here, got everything filled in, and uh, you can see we got quite a few villagers right in the perfect spot to get us tons of iron. And this thing... This thing is unbelievable. We actually, um, within the first hour, had something along the lines of like 12 stacks of iron blocks within the first hour. Um, and that's just what I know was taken uh, by people who were like, wow, we have the iron tightened up. But this thing is going to be amazing for uh, the server. Uh, a lot of us already taken advantage of it. I went in uh, earlier before I started recording and picked up uh, 10 stacks of iron blocks. I've actually got another like 7 or 8 stacks of iron blocks at the house already. Um, and that was just from the process of setting this guy up. But I mean, you can see, I mean, they're spawning like crazy. If you get the chance, build the Iron Titan for your server, you will not regret it. It's totally worth the work. The hardest part of this build was actually not the doors, it was not the building, it was the villagers. The hardest part of this was the villagers. The doors itself actually take some time because you end up putting up something like 1,300 doors total. Um, including in the middle here, you have a whole other set of doors that aren't there right now. Um, but all in all, that really wasn't that difficult. We... Uh, I did the doors and the villages uh, to to stack the villages like this. Um, I want to say I did all the villages in like an hour and 30 minutes of door placing, uh, which really isn't that long at all. So just in case you don't know what the Iron Titan is conceptually, um, basically what it is is uh, when you have a certain number of villagers in a village with a certain number of doors, randomly, iron golems will spawn to protect those villagers. And what the Iron Titan does is take advantage of a mechanic to stack those villages in order to generate iron golems en masse. So, in this case, this version of the farm has 32 villages. 
and each each village is designated by a row of doors so you know we've got uh, this village right here two three you know all the way down 32 villages total and what happens is it's not just this row of doors that counts the other half of the doors over here count also so basically you get 32 villages each of them with 22 doors and because the center of the village is right here uh, the, the iron golems spawn around the edge here and the water of course funnels them in to the middle and they drop and let's go check it out down below we've got a big pillar of glass here so that they can't go worming their way around ah we almost got crushed uh, just kidding we were of course in spectator mode um, so the iron golems go here they drop we've got a little lava chamber and the lava is up at the third high block level so we've got hoppers then we got a block then we got signs then we got lava and i've got lava in each corner and what happens is of course the lava kills the iron golem uh, but because of where the iron spawns the hoppers pick up the drops before the iron golems or before the lava can even get near it and so that funnels it down below and what we've got here is xp craft that went through and made a huge storage system for iron and all these chests will eventually be loaded up with iron uh, but if you look we've got we got a couple of chests of iron going strong uh, and here we are we've got these four we've got this one it's half full that one's empty that one's full uh, and that one's got a little bit and so uh, what I did was I, I came through, whoops, I came through and took iron out of here and iron out of here and got myself 10 stacks of blocks. It was really awesome. Uh, XP built in a system. The, the thing with this with this Titan, and let me get out of the blocks here, the things with this Titan is is that you want to keep the, the, the chunks are loaded because they're spawn chunks, but you got to keep them active. And so the way you do that is you set up a little timer here and basically every 10 seconds it's firing something into the portal uh, whether it be roses which uh, we don't have any roses uh, but we do have eggs and you can see we've got eggs like stacked up on top of that hopper so every 10 seconds it'll fire off either an egg or uh, a poppy into the portal it goes through the portal and that's what keeps the chunks active so it's not just enough that the chunks themselves um, are spawn chunks, but it actually keeps them active uh, as the iron golems fall down. So that's what keeps this guy producing iron nonstop, and that's how uh, you're able to take advantage of it. Again, the iron yield on this is phenomenal. Um, the only downside to this guy, uh, it has to be in spawn chunks, which means... When you spawn, uh, say your bed is blocked, you're going to spawn on this guy. It's the highest point. Um, so what I did was, I, aside from using this little area here as a workstation, um, I went through and set up a bed, and I've got a couple of chests of some leftover mats. So that if folks have, and of course, I made way too many doors. Um, so of course, it, you know, folks spawn here, they can sleep to reset the day. And then they can drop down. I gave them a ladder to climb down uh, so that they can get away from all of this. We've also got this little platform here. I made this because uh, a couple of times I had to get down here because I placed some bad blocks. And so this was my little shortcut to get back in. And I left it, you know, just in case for whatever reason, you know, I have to get in here. Because I, I did have some issues with the way they spawn but I haven't had them repeat since, uh, basically since uh, we fired it up permanently. So this is an unbelievable design. This is the smaller of the two designs. The actual main uh, full version of this has a whole other set of doors and one more tray on top uh, for spawning space. And it's, uh, instead of 32 villages, it's 64 villages. Um, we don't need that there's no way and in a lot of ways this is already producing way more iron than we realistically need um, i've decided that personally i'm going to use the iron for trolleys uh, path so all through the base we're going to have trolley on our path to 
uh, ride along iron blocks, you know, wherever our rails are. Uh, wherever we have him go, his path will be iron blocks. And so I thought that would be pretty neat uh, to do. So we'll take advantage of this iron farm. Uh, going down here, looking at the guardian farm, the drops, the rate. <laughs> this guardian farm is is phenomenal. Uh, you can see them just flooding down. And actually, th this guardian farm produces way too much uh, at this point. But we so far, it keeps up pretty good. Um, we do have uh, a backlog of items. You can see it right there on the bottom. And yeah, that's that's just going to happen. We just kind of let it go. We don't really worry about it. Uh, the storage room that's under here, that again, XB made this storage room as well. All of these first section of chests here on the left are actually the shards. And they're all full. Uh, over here, we're about half full of these uh, prismarine crystals. Same thing with the fish, we're about half full. The ink, we're just a little bit over a row. Yeah, it looks like we're just a little bit over five uh, chests. But we do have these chests right here. A lot of them have ink in them, and so do these. These were all the chests that we had just basically stockpiling while we were rebuilding, or while XB was rebuilding this room. So, of course, we're going to uh, move all that stuff in there. This right here is build junk. All of this is build junk uh, from where XB and I were building. And of course, these here were the mats that we set aside for uh, the Titan and the uh, Guardian farm. All of that's going to go bye-bye. This is going to go bye-bye. We got a pretty good spawn. We've got the, uh, the Guardian farm, the Slime farm, which, you know, it's not amazing drop rates, mostly because people don't always sit here. Uh, but while I was building the Titan, we got quite a bit of slime. And then, of course, the Titan. So, fantastic spawn. But, as if that was not enough, I have been busier than that. So, let's go take a break. and We're going to look at the base. Alrighty, we're back at the house. And first things first, our good buddy, Jen. Um amazing so they went through and they beat the ender dragon something i wasn't really able to participate in uh mostly because i work weekends um but i set up a room uh they all had a blast the dragon was killed um and then i went into the end uh to collect my elytra i had my gear on me uh ended up dying uh then i turned around and rage quitted couldn't do it Jin. uh phenomenal i hope you have a better day in mc hope some of this will help she drops off a couple of diamonds of course some pumpkin pie golden apples some cake oh look at that hope you have a better day cake uh pumpkins some rose bushes to cheer me up uh it was awesome yeah so a really awesome like gift that, that was huge jen you totally made my day i'm gonna grab all of this and we're going to take all that and put it away. And I, I did have a much better day. Also, somehow I got a music disc and gunpowder. I don't know if somebody stopped by the house. Um, but it's in the mailbox. We're going to go ahead and grab that and get that out. And we're going to go inside. Now, I've gone through and I've restocked the bone shop. I did have a couple of diamonds, but I am stockpiling bones here. Uh, just, you know, for the record, I don't expect the bone shop to do a whole lot. Anybody can go to the skeleton farm, farm their own bone meal. It's just a, you know, hey, that would be nice if they needed some stuff and they didn't feel like farming it. Ta-da! Yeah, that's right. I have gone ham on the storage room. Absolutely ham. Uh... I've gone through, we've got rows and rows of chests. I've set this up so that I can apply a filter. Uh, so basically each set of chests will be an item. And then, uh, yeah, so we're going to do a set here and a set here. Uh, I don't even know, 5, 10, 15, 19 items long by 3. That's 57 items per side. Plus we've got a total of 8 silos here. And if you've not seen a silo... Uh, this is built off of a Tango Tech style uh, silo, something he introduced years ago. And uh, basically what you got is you've just got chests stacked with comparators. And as items go into those chests, the comparator hits the wall or lights up the uh, light itself. And so you can see it as it fills up. You know, for instance, if we go through, 
let's just grab a stack out of here and we're going to go ahead and jump up and we're going to put those in the top okay so you can see now look there is cobble in the top now you won't see it flowing down but you'll see it once it stops and of course the way it is right now all it's going to do is flow down back into here anyway um, so we're definitely going to use it for cobble i'm tempted to use it for dirt but i've only got half a double chest for dirt um, so we may not use dirt we're definitely going to use these guys these silos for some of our other things like our crops i want to be able to trade and i don't know if i've shown this but in the floor here i have got a killing chamber this is amazing i'm going to show it to you in just a second um, our good buddy Dude Plays went through and I filled an order for, or I asked an order for lava uh, from his new pyro shop. So we filled in the whole floor here in lava source blocks, which is just amazing. It looks great. And it matches kind of our little killing chamber, which is all sharp and snazzy. And uh, of course, I've got some lights on the side here. Now, I haven't done the walls yet, and I have not done the ceiling. And speaking of which, let's go ahead and put our fancy lighting back on. You have to turn it off at spawn. It's just absolutely unbearable uh, with uh, everything going on to have smooth lighting. So anyway, we've got. I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna have these lights here in the walls. I'm definitely gonna have the lights in the stairs because I don't have a choice. Uh, and we're probably gonna go red. I've got some black clay along the sides here, and we've got some lamps at the top. And I don't know what I'm going to do for the ceiling yet. Um, I'm really toying with a couple of ideas. But I believe from this ceiling, I think we're only like three or four blocks to surface. So I definitely have to be careful about how far I go uh, and what I do. So it may just be a simple design. I may do something in the ceiling like glass, something interactive. Maybe like a water and fire sort of thing. So we've got the lava down here. Maybe the glass up here is covered in water. Uh, maybe we get a guardian and put it in there. Who knows? That could be fun. Um, so we've got our other storage. This is all the storage that we had saved up. And um, all this stuff has to be relocated. Now we've also got our little pathway. You know what? I'm going to go show you this first. So we've got uh, our villager uh, trading system here. I have done an unbelievable amount of trading. Uh, junk farmers are basically, that. that's all based off of the crop trades. So for instance, this guy is 22, 17 is really high, 18 is really high. Bread is, of course, moot. 13 for the pumpkin is really high. Uh, the lowest you can get is 8. And uh, that's as far as I got him. So when I got those, I pretty much just pushed them guys off. Now you can see I've got one here. Look, he's got an eight pumpkin trade. Um, I've got the, the wheat and carrot are still a little, or the potato and carrot are still a little high. Wheat at 18 is not bad. The pumpkin, though, that's the one I'm kind of looking at. Like, this could be the guy that I want to use. Uh, I've also got a couple others. This guy's pumpkin nine. This guy's pumpkin eight. This guy's pumpkin nine. We got a junk, a junk, a junk, a junk, a junk. I got a bunch of junk farmers. So let's just take, say, say for a moment, we're going to kill this sign. We're going to say we don't like this guy. We're going to go ahead and eject him. Bye bye, junk farmer. Nobody likes you. And he is going to flow down this way. And we can see here, did he really stop? He stopped in the one spot, didn't No, He's coming. All right, so he's going to take a while. Uh, but basically what's going to happen is he's going to flow down over into this area. And this area I set up with a push system so that uh, basically it ejects them into the cart. They almost always land on the activator rail, which is kind of a bummer. You would think the activator rail would put them to the side, but it doesn't. So then I have a timer. As soon as the cart goes into that hopper there... Um, the timer starts and then the blocks push the testificate uh, into the water and the water pushes them down into the system. Now I wonder how close I am. Let's see if we can't get our silk pick. Check out how close we are. Uh, is that our silk? That's a, a silk pick. Let's see how close he is. 
I don't want to miss it, but I don't want to be behind either. Uh, are we close? Oh, here we go. All right, here he goes. Finally, he's coming along. He's going to hit the rail. And he's going to take off. You'll see it ejects him. Timer kicks in, pushes him into the water. Now we really got to hurry. So we hurry along. The water is pushing him around underneath. He'll come through here. Come on. There he goes. And, oh my God, there's nowhere to go. You're going to die. And he dies right in the lava. That is so cool. I love that. Um, so I've got that system set up in place for all of that. Um, over here, okay, we've got the breeder. And I've got a bunch of villagers up here. I've got like 70 or so villagers up here. And I set up a minecart solution so that the minecart could come through. I could put one down. It would pick up a guy, bring him into the system, and then push him along. And, okay, this guy, he hits the water. He gets pushed along. Now, one of the things I wanted to do was make it so that this system could uh, kind of keep itself busy. I didn't want the villagers to sit idle. Um, and it's really just a novelty sort of thing, uh, but it's what I wanted. So what I did was I set up a track, and I have the track coming around. And so what happens is they get pushed down, they get pushed down, they get pushed down, they get all the way to the end here, nowhere from the go, they go back up. And uh, let's see, they go running around. You can see he's getting pushed now. Uh, they go running around the system here. They go back up this hill, they come back down, they go right back into the system. So they'll continue to cycle as long as, as we let them, and which is really cool. I like that they cycle like that. The other thing I did, I temporarily shut off our villager breeder in order to gut open a massive amount of land. Um, bam, here we are straight to bedrock. Um... I wanted a place to set up a wheat, potato, and carrot farm, and I thought this would be an amazing place to do so. I've seen on the Hermitcraft server, False Symmetry, in her uh, hall of donators, her Patreon hall, where she gutted out the ground and she used black glass around the bedrock, and I liked it so much that I did it too, and you know what? It looks amazing. I really like this. The only thing I thought about doing differently was filling in these holes with lava underneath just to provide lighting, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to leave it. Um, so I moved my beacon over here in order to um, in order to be able to play uh, in gutting out this land. Now right there you will see that we have our villager farm. You can see our little guy with his doors. Of course, the light access to the sky is blocked, so this guy really doesn't play with the doors right now. We're not, we don't have any breeding going on. Uh, what we're going to do up top is uh, I have the villager uh, farm here. Where is it? Oh, I went too high, didn't I? Hmm. Hmm. I did. I, whoop. Too high. We're going to go this way. This is the level that our villager farm was at, and I took out one of them, and I needed to, to make the wheat farm area. So what we're going to do is we're probably going to relocate this villager breeder. Maybe. It's, you know, it, it, it will be functional even with just the one. Uh, so we may keep it. I, I may keep it right here and just clear the sky access for the doors that are right there. And it'll all should work. Uh, but that hinge is the one whether or not let's grab this guy no uh that hinges on whether or not we get these farms set up so there's a really amazing design for wheat carrot and potato farms by uh, cz petty and uh it was actually redesigned a little bit by another gentleman whose name escapes me but he did an amazing job in the tutorial and so what i'm going to do is uh i'm going to build these farms here, uh, XB has actually built the uh, wheat farm version of it, I believe, and it's working great. So that's where we're going to put right here. I think when I did the count, we have just enough width. We're actually a little bit longer than we need to be, which is fine. 
Um, depending on what goes on, I may do more than one level. Um, and then, of course, we want to automate pumpkins and melons. I'm probably going to put this right here in the same area right above the wheat, potato, and carrots. So, unbelievable amount of work. I've gotten a lot done. Whoops. Including walking off the ledge. I've gotten a lot done um, in my absence. I just haven't been in any condition to record. So, finally everything... Uh, whoa, that was a bad move. Thank goodness for Feather Falling 4 boots. Um, I'm about to do it again if I don't watch it. There we go. Uh, so, everything's been lined up now. We're, I've made a ton of physical progress to the base. I just need to, like, start completing projects. I've got stuff done. So, uh, I, that's on the horizon, those farms. Uh, the other thing I thought is that we would do something with the sugar cane. Uh, make it deeper. I thought we would go deeper with the sugar cane. I really like this setup. Uh, we do have the slime farm at spawn. I've got a ton of cobble to make uh, furnaces. I really have everything we need. Uh, if the wheat... And the carrot, the potatoes, and all that is going to be all the way to the floor. Maybe these guys will as well. I've even been on the kind of thought train in order to move this maybe um, and put it down one side. And so basically all of our crops uh, will be here. So, for instance, that, that uh, wheat, potato, and carrot farm, it really, from this wall over there, it only comes out to like right here. Uh, if that's the case, I've got this whole like six, seven block span here that would be perfect for, for sugar cane. And what we could do is just build from the floor up and stack sugar cane in one wall um, because we would have pumpkin and uh, melons on top of those three farms. We could put literally a ton of agriculture all in this section right here. And the only thing I would want to do specifically would be touch up the walls because I hate the multicolored walls. You can see where I filled in some with cobble, but I'd love to go back and put in just all smooth stone, clean it all up, make it look pretty. So I have been rambling and talking like crazy. Um, I forgot to mention also our good buddy XB left a gift from a wayward. I'm saying it's XB because um, there goes that cake. I think it's XB because he actually changed his name on Skype to uh, a wayward uh, fellow. So uh, he dumped off. There, there were diamonds. There were emeralds. There were hoppers, leather, quartz, coal, lapis, bone block, two mending books. Amazing. Um, so he dropped this off. But I didn't want to remove it until I showed you guys uh, what he had done. He's actually done this for a couple of of the guys on the iCraft, or the, well, the folks, rather, on the iCraft server, which has been an amazing thing. And he's worked tirelessly since he got started to help everybody. And that was part of the reason why I finished the Titan too, because he's been selflessly giving to everybody. And he really wanted to do the Titan. He just couldn't get it together time-wise uh, between the move and everything. So we took care of it for our good buddy. And, uh, and in return, I... Well, even before that, he rewarded us with this cool gift. So, a ton of stuff going on, a lot of projects to do. I, I made so much progress, and I felt bad not showing you and time-lapsing. Uh, but I just had to skip ahead. You know, they, I could linger on some old footage and try to clean it up, and it didn't sound good, and I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to move forward. So, this is where we're at, and we made a ton of progress. So, as far as projects are concerned, we've got the farms, we've got the sugar cane, We've got the house above us, which desperately needs attention. Um, we've got a walkway from our house to town, which needs attention. We've got the storage room behind us, which, whoops, <laughs> needs to be cleaned up. And, of course, we've got these villagers here behind us, which I would love to relocate some of these guys uh, to a safer place. Now, I have AFK'd here overnight. Didn't have a single problem. No zombies made it down. But you can never be too safe. So I would like to relate, relocate some villagers that I want to keep permanently. So we've got that to do. Um, just a ton of stuff. we got a ton of stuff to do. And, of course, we got Trolley that we have to look out for um, as well. So 
Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. Share, subscribe before you leave if you haven't already done it. It is absolutely appreciated. The only way small channels like myself and others get out to a bigger audience is if you share or subscribe. Like especially would be huge. Uh, but, you know, we'll take what we can get. So, until next time, guys and gals, I will catch you later. Bye-bye.